So what we have to cover for this video is going to be something known as the t-test. And based on, I, I would like to preface this by saying that I am in no means a mathematics teacher. So I'm going to try my best to teach statistical analysis, but it's not going to be the best. So just keep that in mind. Now, what we have to talk about t-test is, it is a type of statistical test that you use when you want to compare means or average of two sets of data to see if they are significantly different or not. In the previous video, I did say that you can use the two standard error bars and you can measure the degree of overlap. If they don't overlap, you can assume that the means are significantly different. But this will not give you a very high confidence. If you want to have a more reliable analysis of the two means, the t-test does a better job. So without wasting time, we first have to understand when is it that we can do a t-test. A t-test is usually done when the data, you have two sets of data because you want to compare two means, right? The two sets of data must be continuous and they must be quantitative because, and then let's just go back. What's the meaning of continuous and quantitative, by the way? Continuous data is just, if you remember, it is just uh, the one where it is an infinite number of values, results between two extremes can have decimal places, and uh, quantitative just means it is numerical. And then, of course, the population must show normal distribution. When you take the data, it must show normal distribution. What does it mean by normal distribution? I told you that the data shows a bell-shaped curve, and it's quite symmetrical. And for each data that you compare, they must have at least 10 sets of data, at least. Okay, 10 or more data for each set. Now, can we compare, can we use the t-test to compare the distribution of blood group? We can't because blood group is qualitative. Okay, so you can't use the t-test for that. What about the mean heights of 30-year-old women in Malaysia and the mean height of 30-year-old women in Thailand? Yes, because the height of women in the countries, in the two countries, are continuous. It's a it's within a range, it's quantitative because height is numerical and the data will show normal distribution because, you know, most people will be of average height, uh, but very few people will be of extremely short or extremely tall height. So that's how, that's how we know that we can use the t-test for this. So we can use the t-test to see if the data is significantly different. Now, in my situation over here, we want to see the efficacy or the effectiveness of two types of fertilizers. We will prepare two fields and we plant the seeds in each field. And for each field over here, we have about 11 seeds at the top. Is it 11? Yeah, 11 seeds at the top and 11 seeds at the bottom. So remember for t-test, you need to have at least 10 data for each group. So for the field at the top, they were given, the uh, seeds were given fertilizer A, and for the field at the bottom, they were given fertilizer B. And the plants grew. So when the plants grew, uh, we saw the height of the plant, and then we recorded the height of the plant maybe after 20 days, and the plant height using fertilizer A were recorded in the left column, Fertilizer B is recorded on the right column. First thing we always do before we do a t-test is we find out the mean. So when you look at the mean, when the plants use fertilizer A, the mean height is 5.9 centimeters. Fertilizer B is 7.5 centimeters. Immediately, some students are like, oh, fertilizer B is better. But wait, we are not confident. We need to do statistical analysis to be confident with our conclusion. Next thing we do is we calculate the standard deviation. Uh, there's a previous video on how to calculate standard deviation. And the standard deviation here for uh, fertilizer group A, group A fertilizer is uh, fertilizer A, the group for fertilizer A will be 0 0.71, group for fertilizer B 0 0.52, and the number of data, not date, yeah, that was a typo there, not dates, number of data is uh, 11 each. So when you're doing a t-test, the first thing that you have to do is you have to construct something known as a null hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction. The word null here means no, okay? So 
in this case, because it's a t-test and you're comparing the means between the two group, the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the mean height of plants when using the two fertilizers or there is no significant difference in the mean height of the plants in the two fields. That's it. That's how you construct your null hypothesis. So null hypothesis just means that there is no significant difference in the mean. That's it. So the next thing you have to do is you have to calculate your t value. t value is just numerator's modulus where mean 1 minus mean 2. The modulus just means that even if you get a negative value, convert it to positive. I'll show you how it works later. Denominator at the bottom, square root of standard deviation 1 squared divided by number of data 1 plus standard deviation of data 2 squared divided by the number of data 2, which I've highlighted respectively to show you which colors correspond to what values. So as you can see the numerator here, the mean 1 minus mean 2, 5.9 minus 7.5, you will get a value of negative 1.6, but because it's modulus, just convert it to 1.6. T-test values do not have negative numbers. It's always positive. Then square root the one at the bottom. Make sure that when you're doing your calculation, you put the brackets in properly. Yeah? And you will get a t-test value, a t-value of 6.03. Now, what does this tell us? It doesn't tell us much yet. Okay, You just got your t-value right now. The next thing you have to do is calculate something known as the degree of freedom. For me, the degree of freedom is the number of coffee divided by the number of donuts multiplied by the number of vacations I have. But for the t-test, the degree of freedom is just the number of data in set 1, n1, minus 1, plus the number of data in set 2, which is n2, minus 1. You must remember how to calculate the degree of freedom. You do not need to remember or memorize the formula for t-test. You don't. But you do need to remember the formula to calculate the degree of freedom in t-tests. Sometimes they give it to you, but sometimes they don't. So you have to know how to do that. So in this case, the t, the n minus 1 value so it's 11 minus 1 plus 11 minus 1. And in this case, your degree of freedom is basically 20. Now, what does this tell us? This is where the difficult part starts. Normally in the exam, they'll give you something known as the probability table. So you have to consult that table, okay? I really do not know how else to mention it. So this probability table, the P table here, has a few values at the top, 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, for example, also 0 0.001, okay? And then below that table, you also have your degree of freedom and those numbers like that. So your probability value is the one in black, okay, the one at the top, and then the green values, I will explain what that means. But what does that 0 0.10, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01, and 0 0.001 mean exactly? This is the way I teach it. There are better ways of understanding it. This is just the way I've taught it. Please, um, and I hate, ex I hate telling students to memorize this, but this is one of those very few moments that I have to tell you. Um, this is just something that you might have to memorize, okay? Or go ask your maths teacher. You might have a good maths teacher who are, who is able to explain this. So the value of 0 0.10, a probability value of 0 0.10 just means that you are 90% confident that the two means are significantly different. That's what it means. Sig difference just means significantly different. 0 0.05 just means that you are 95% confident that the two means are significantly different. 0 0.01 just means you are 99% confident that the two means are significantly different. And 0 0.001 just means that you are 99.9% confident that the two means are significantly different. Now, in research, depending on what type of research you do and depending on your... Um, research instructor or the research supervisor. In most cases in universities, again, don't quote me on this, this is just based on my own personal experience, most research instructors, when you're doing a particular research question, they want you to be at least 95% confident or higher. So if you get a value where it says that you are 90% confident that the two means are significantly different, that's not good enough. You want to be at least 95% confident about something 
to make the conclusion that the two means are significantly different. Which means to say, if you get a value of 94% confidence or 93 or 92 or 91, that means that the two means are not significantly different. Anything lower than 95% means that they are not significantly different. That's just the way the cookie crumbles when it comes to a few types of research papers, t-test being one of them. Now, remember, we have a degree of freedom of 20 based on what we calculated earlier, didn't we? When we take the degree of freedom of 20, I've highlighted that blue part. Look at those numbers, 1.73, 2.09, 2.85, and 3.85. If you remember, I told you that you want to be at least 95% confident about something. So 95% confidence is always the cutoff point. So that is why that value of 2.09 is referred to as something known as the critical value, which is that important value. So what exactly is that critical value? The way I explain critical value is this. Your T value that you calculated must at least reach that number, 2.09, for you to be 95% confident that the two means are significantly different. Your T value must hit that value at least, okay? To be 95% confident that the two means are significantly different. Now, remember your T value that you calculated was 6.03. Is it higher than the critical value or lower than the critical value? It's higher. It's much higher than 2.09. So what's your conclusion in this case? Our conclusion in this case over here is very simple. We just basically said that the T value that we calculated is higher than the critical value of 2.09. Therefore, we are more than 95% confident that the two means are significantly different. So when you use fertilizer A and when you use fertilizer B, the mean height when using fertilizer B is significantly higher than when you're using fertilizer A. In fact, that value 6.03 is even higher than 2.85, as you can see me putting it here. So you're more than 99% confident that the two means are significantly different. And you're, it's even higher than 3.85, which means to say that you're more than 99.9% confident that the two means are significantly different. That's just what that means about t-tests like that. Now, let's try a different one where we did another experiment that is fertilizer C and fertilizer D. And the, these are the heights that were recorded for fertilizer C and fertilizer D. The means over here were 2.6 and 2.7. Now, immediately you might go, ah, they are not different. They are not very different. But you need to be conclusive. You need to use statistical analysis for this. Now, standard deviation, I've calculated 0 0.296 and 0 0.197. Number of data is 11. And again, construct your null hypothesis. There is no significant difference in the mean height of plants in the two field, or there is no significant difference in the mean height of plants when using fertilizer C and fertilizer D. Any of those statements are fine. Your T value is 0 0.932. I've just calculated it. Okay. Degree of freedom is the same. 11 minus 1 plus 11 minus 1, which is 20. Let's consult the table. Remember, the critical value at 0 0.05, at P equals to 0 0.05, your critical value is 2.09. You must hit at least that value to be 95% confident that the two means are significantly different. But what happens over here is your T value is 0 0.93. Two. So what does that tell you if your T value is 0 0.932? Is it higher than the critical value or lower than the critical value? It's lower. Now, because the T value that you calculated is lower than the critical value of 2.09, what does that tell us? It tells us that we are not 95% confident that the two means are significantly different because it's lower than that, okay? And therefore, in this situation over here, you will then accept the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis states that there is no significant difference in the mean height of the plants in the two 
fields. That's what that means. So in this case, when using fertilizer C and fertilizer D, the mean height of the plants are not significantly different because that's what the null hypothesis states. For the most part, I always tell my students, look at the probability value at 0 0.05 and you will see that critical value right there. If it's higher than, if whatever you calculate is higher than the critical value, it means that the means are significantly different and you reject the null hypothesis. But if your T value is lower than the critical value, the means are not significantly different and you accept the null hypothesis. This is how you do your t-test value on a basic level. And I hope you understand this. They can also report the t-test in a slightly different way. And I just want you to be aware about the t-test or statistical analysis questions can be asked or can be reported. Now, as an example here, I have, uh, let's say we just did two tests. Okay, two types of t-tests. Uh, one t-test was comparing the mean height of students in classroom A and the mean height of students in classroom B. The other t-test uh, was the mean response time of students after drinking orange juice and the, compared to the mean response time of students after drinking apple juice. Now, instead of giving you the t-value, how the exam questions could report it is they would give you just the value of P, which is the probability value. And they would write the probability value as P, for example, the first t-test, P is lesser than 0.05. And for the second one, P is more than 0.05. And they can ask you a question, are these two means significantly different or not? So some students are like, I know how to consult the probability table by looking at critical values. But what happens if the question just gives you only the p-values? What you do then is you just imagine the probability values without the critical values and such. So the 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. That's the probability value. So that value 0 0.05, I'm just writing it there. P value at 0 0.01 and P value at 0 0.001 is lesser than 0 0.05 because in terms of just the number, 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 is smaller than the value of 0 0.05. So that's what that value means by P is lesser than 0 0.05. And 0 0.10, in terms of a number, it is a larger number than 0 0.05. So that range means that P is more than 0 0.05. So when the question asks you, are the means significantly different? For the first one, where they compare the heights of students in classroom A and B, the value of P is lesser than 0 0.05, so it falls in that range. So you're more than 95% confident. You might be 99% confident or 99.9% .9 confident that the two means are significantly different. So in this case, if the question asks you, if the value of P is less than 0 0.05, are the means significantly different? The answer is yes. What about the response time of students after drinking orange juice and apple juice? The p-value was more than 0 0.05, which falls into that range, which means to say that you are less than 95% confident that the two means are significantly different. And I told you that anytime you're lesser than 95% confident, we assume that the means are not significantly different. So I just want you to be aware of the different ways they may ask these t-test questions or for, or for that matter, other types of statistical analysis questions as well. So I hope this lesson on t-test makes sense.